Fora TV. The world is thinking. July 4th, 1831, the Beagle was recommissioned for a survey of South America and then around the world. Fitzroy was to help establish an unbroken chain of meridian distances making possible English trade, political power, colonial possession. But with his schooling, he would engage in botanical, geological, and meteorological endeavors. But Fitzroy wanted to be totally prepared. What had happened to Pringle Stokes on that beagle, suicide from depression and loneliness, should not happen to him. Therefore, he was most careful what to take on the ship. Sextant, compass, telescopes, 22 clocks in order to calculate longitude at sea. He, in fact, took the son of a mathematical instrument maker, George Stebling, his sole job being the care of the clocks. He took two artists with him, photography not yet having been developed. There were 73 men on board, including three few agents. 27-year-old Yorkminster, 15-year-old Jemmy Button, and the little girl, 12-year-old Fuage Basket. 26-year-old Bolt Memory had died secondary to a smallpox vaccination. Fitzroy was obdurate, determined, resourceful, but lacked ease with men. He was a high-strung aristocrat, subject to fits of depression. He knew of the madness in his family, his uncle's suicide. He feared loneliness and isolation of command. He would be gone five years on this tiny boat. He knew that he would want and need a conversationalist, someone with whom to engage in intelligent conversation. He wasn't sure to whom to turn, so he appealed to professors up at Cambridge. Stephen Henslow, Darwin's mentor, suggested to Fitzroy that he invite young Charles Darwin. Had the, he was just finished undergraduate school. Darwin was 21, Fitzroy 26. Had the timing of Fitzroy's need or the sense of his own fallibility been any different, that door opened at that time for a Shropshire doctor's son, an undistinguished Bachelor of Arts grad who for want of ambition was preparing to become a clergyman to voyage around the world to shatter and remake the way we think of ourselves in the profoundest way would never have happened. <laughs>